Good morning, traders. How we doing? Yes, I made it. I'm right back. Like a track, guys. Definitely, if you guys want to do us a favor, let's start up this show with a like. You guys have made it to live trading with Benzinga. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Those words have been dancing around my head all night. Oh, it's Vegas law, that phrase. Kiana. Fisher. Joy. Joe. Cards drawn are the past, ones to come are future. And the best part, it's beatable. What's going on, traders? Yes, we are starting up the live trading stream. I might have some visitors coming in and out. I'm enjoying it. How are you guys doing out there? What's on your radar? You guys let me know in the chat so we can take a look. I'm enjoying the pre-market scene, certain stocks up. I'm still holding on to my Airbnb, Blade, Genie, uh, some of the swings that I took yesterday, actually, you know, I took Blade at 994 here live. So we'll see what happens with that stock today, but it is trading up. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one. We'll see if it can make a move past 1050 right here at the open. I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see that. And of course, if you guys got a stock, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at those. Let's let's definitely put throw them up in the chat. As you guys can see, this 1050 that we broke out of yesterday now we're trying to see if we can get another breakout from this level. I would want to hold towards 1030s on pullbacks, but we want to see an extension come from this 1050, go towards that 11% or that 11. We're up right now about 5.3% on the position. We're looking to get close towards 8 to 10% on this name, and then we'll take some profits, but you can't be mad. Nice little swing trade going into the day, and I'll, I'll be paying attention to it. Now let's catch up with the chat. I know that you guys got a lot of stocks you guys want to watch today. Good morning. How we doing, Matt? What's up, Brian? Dylan? We got Marco in the house. We got two... Two-Tone Boxing Club Beachwood. I love it. I need to get to a boxing club. Let's keep going. NOK, thumbs up. James in the house. Born to be free. The Super SPAC man. Matt Miller, Benjamin, happy Daniel. This is what it's all about. It's good to have you guys here. Ava saying that ALF looks interesting. I'll go ahead and I'll take a look at that. It's good to see some new faces in here. Chris M., Trent, Rodrigo. Good morning. Let's get it. All right, let's go ahead. Let's look at the stock that Ava wants to look at, which is ALF. Let's take a look. All right, so um, let's let's take a look a little bit here on the daily. What do we have on the daily chart? Okay, daily chart has a nice bottoming action. And yes, I, I can at least tell you right off the back, yeah, it just doesn't look like a bad chart to at least start taking a temp. You guys know how I like to buy off support and buy those big dips. One thing that I'd clearly look at is that first bottoming action. Can we start really holding those levels? So if we couldn't draw a trend line, we're going to draw from this little high right here, not from that extreme price point. We're going to draw it right here. So as you guys can see, multiple points, three points really make it a trend line here. Um, now the big thing for me is do we get an inside day maybe coming in here towards 806 or do we get a quick breakout through the high here, which is 1869? Of course, you could run into some resistance near nine. So we'll look for a push through that $9, getting up past that $9, going towards, let's say, 950 and then a pull back towards nine would be nice. Then I would attack that kind of buy the dip of opportunity, Ava. Let's go ahead. Let's get into another one here. Um, which one's being mentioned here? I'll, I'll do two tones here. BTCM, that's not a bad one to take a look at. I did see SOS moving a significant amount in the pre-market. We'll see what happens to that one. I think it's up right now 21%. So definitely you can take a look at that one if, if BTCM doesn't look like the one for you. Right now, I think it's kind of in a little bit of a chop zone um, and also Bitcoin coming down today. So we'll, we'll see what happens with this bit mining. But definitely, if you want to take a look at maybe SOS or Mara, 
I wouldn't blame you. I know those were moving and you can keep an eye on them. All right, so this morning, uh, there's a couple of stocks that I wanted to get into. Uh, but first things first, I wanna get into a crypto update. So we need to go ahead and nail out our Voyager crypto update. All right, guys, pulling it up here for us. Let's go ahead and take a look at the crypto market before we get towards the bell here. As you guys can see in the red there, the only one I'm really seeing up is AVAX. So Avalanche up about 10.9%. You also got Luna up about 28%. So definitely check that one out. That's Terra. Um, and then DOT up about 4.75. Bitcoin down 2.3%. Ethereum down 4.79 and Solana that was up massively yesterday down 13.04%. That's going to probably do it for our Voyager. Like always, guys, if you guys want to check it out, I definitely suggest go ahead. You guys can get $50 in free Bitcoin when you use the code Zing on Voyager. Deposit at least $100 and make your first trade. With over 60 assets to choose from and an annual yield earnings of up to 12%, Voyager is your launch pad into the world of crypto. Definitely check it out, guys. All right, let's go ahead. Let's get back to some stock action here. want to go ahead and nail some stuff. Let's get it going. Looks like we got my man, the one, the only, the YOLO king, or, or should we call him YOLO Z. Let's get him on. What's, what's up? What's up? up? My fault. You gave me the wrong link. Where's Enver? Enver, you gave me the wrong link. It, it, it was Enver. He was trying to play tricks on us this morning, <laughs> but hey. I was like, it's 9.15. The show has it started. Right? Come on. You, you know me, man. I'm, I'm always on top. The big thing is, you know, me being on pre-market prep might, oh, yeah. might always play a little bit of a factor. And you normally Spencer running it and I'm jumping in now. But let's go ahead. And, and, and do you got anything you want to take a look at today, Zunaid? Anything on your radar? I want to go ahead and talk about yesterday. Can you please pull up UPST for me while I talk to the chat? Anyone in the chat, did you go ahead and play? I know I know. Uh, it was Danielle um who played upsc and she got two dollars out of it anyone else in the chat play upst because i know you see that move from about 270 mm -hmm. all the way up hitting highs past 290 mm -hmm. that was come on come on nice move there man it's and, and, and i'm not a genius because you know we i went ahead and talked about this one and the setup it's because we talked about the flow that came in, right? You had two to three plus million dollars of flow that came in this one. And you look at the chart, you have your risk reward and you follow the big money. If someone can go ahead and risk two, three million dollars, I can go ahead and risk two, three hundred bucks. That's the way I look at it. Hey, you know? that's a smart, smart move. You know, I always look for the big fish, you know, and, yeah. and that's exactly what you did there. Not a not a bad looking chart also. Let's see if it holds any pullbacks today towards 282. Uh, that's kind of the level that I'd see pulling back to and then maybe just bouncing right off of that. Yeah. 280 would definitely be a level we wouldn't want to see a break. In terms, yeah, in terms of AFRM, one of the levels I'm taking a look at here that I'm marking and setting a target, mm -hmm. setting a price alert on is about 106.60. Uh, that was the a bit of a bounce level from after hours yesterday. Um, so that's one of the things that I'm looking at. And I'm also going to be taking a look at 110 just because that a whole number. It's not as strong as 100 or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But that's one of the ones that I'm taking a look at. Um, so from AFRM, I'm looking at 106.60 area. And I'm also looking at 110 area. Okay. That's not a bad one to take a look at. Definitely making a monster move yesterday. After and you've got, yeah. And you've got Apple trying to get over 155. Um, so that'll be interesting. It did hit 156 yesterday, so it's not like it's trying to beat all-time highs as it passes that. Um, and then if we go ahead and take a look at MRNA, this one I'm a little upset. I'm upset at, right? Um, because I went ahead and played this from, I think it was 450s, but I let it go at 455. And now the stock is at 462. So I'm a little upset about it, but that's okay. Um, that being said, if it does get back around the 455, 450 area, definitely the 450 area, I will at least look to scalp it again, just because of that whole number, 
Um, and that's what I've got. But as always, I will have my options up just to see if any big flows coming in. And then um, we'll uh, go from there. I'll tell you one to take a look at for me. And I just wanted to hear your thoughts on the options. What's up? The yeah. problem is SOS. SOS, SOS really started moving this morning. It's a cheaper stock. We're talking $3. But I was wondering if there's if you see some YOLO option contract volume there. Um, because that, that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. You know, expiration coming, pop over $3. You know, there's yeah. gonna be some people attacking that. Um, so what are you thinking about this? Do you see any options volume on this? I, I don't know if there was any. Let me take a look and see if there was any yesterday or not. Okay. Um, I don't believe there was. Yeah, I don't really see anything anything too much. But I do know that on SPRT um, support, we did support.com. I know we had again. I, I mainly look at calls, right? So please yeah. know that my bias is to the upside here. Um, we did have some calls that came in to like the twenty sevens, the thirties. Um, we had a sweep of about three hundred and ninety thousand that came on twenty two dollar calls that expire October fifteenth, and then we also had a sweep of about three hundred thousand dollars that came in on strike twenty seven that expired on September twenty seventh. Um, so that's why that's the one that's kind of like got my little interest. Um, and that's what I want to look at now. It's tricky because at the opening flush, it's crazy, but look at, look at, if you can pull up support, uh, and I, and I promise I'll actually pull it up on my end after we start trading as well. If you go ahead and look at SPRT, right. Uh, do you have pre-market on there or is that, is that pre-market as well? Okay. Um, yeah, so if you if you went ahead and had pre market, you would see that it kind of bounced off of twenty five, and so if this thing goes to like say twenty six or so, I'm looking for it to come back and test twenty five, and I'm looking to get a quick quick scalp out of it. Um, Diane is what it was, not Daniel. Diane, you're welcome for UPSC yesterday. Uh, that's what I'm looking for, right? And I've did I've done this many times. I literally so for BBIG yesterday, I had my buy set at. Ten dollars and one cent. All right, that was my limit. I got filled immediately. It's a bracket order. Immediately, I've got a limit to go ahead and sell at ten twenty, and I've got to get the hell out at about nine ninety. Right, so I'm risking ten cents. My first target is twenty cents, and my second one is forty cents, and then my third one is seventy cents. So that's how I'm kind of looking for a bounce, especially with these type of stocks. Why do I mention that? Same thing I'm looking to do with SPRT. Have a limit out there for about twenty five dollars and three cents. Twenty four ninety, I'm getting out. Uh, profit target would be about thirty cents, and then so on, and so forth. Just that quick bounce. That's all I want. Just like a tennis ball. I'm just looking for a quick bounce, and the tennis ball will eventually stop bouncing. And I don't care. I'm looking for that first bounce, and I'm trying to get out. Is it just me that can't hear you? The good old fashioned mute button. There you are. Okay. All right. So Ben's world talking about I like Penn today. So let's go ahead and take a look here really quickly for him for Penn, Penn National Gaming. Let's take a look. You know, we had, you know, NFL weekend coming into play. Yeah, man. Sideways consolidation for a couple of days. Let's see if we can break through the this high right here, the the, the seventh. I would love to see that high get broken. The high is 85.53. So 85.50 is going to be an important level. From there, we can attack the eighth high, which is 86.40. If we can get through both of those highs today, I think you could see another leg up. One of the things that points to me also in the direction was yesterday's volume increased going into the move. We'll see if we can get it through that resistance. And it's not a bad look, Benz. I definitely will look at it at the open to see if we can get some good push in pen yeah and for me um with pen and dkng right like you mentioned we have nfl that just kicked off last night if you really want to yolo something and if you believe that there will be a high demand for nfl betting then maybe you can grab what i would consider a yolo on next week's pen and dkng because you may get news about how well the handle was um for the bets, right? For the DraftKings fantasy football contests and all of that. So that's something that you can go ahead and try to play. I haven't looked at the charts, so I can't speak on it technically in terms of the chart moves um, and the chart patterns. But theory-wise, that's something that may be beneficial for you. 
All right, guys, we'll see what happens with my blade. I'm still holding it from yesterday, Zinaid. How's it going? Is it up? Is it down? It's up over 50 cents. So um, on a $10 stock, that's not too, doing too bad right now. Um, what was your, what was your, uh, so that's like what, 5%? What was your uh, stop mean um, profit target? Like, what is it, I guess? Um, so, I mean, when I first got into the trade, I was looking for a move towards 1050. But I mean, waking up today at 1050 for, it's kind of like, uh, we can just take the profit or we can look for an opening push. That's what I'm going to look for. Uh, an opening push towards. So you're getting greedy. Yeah, a little bit, you know? Yeah. You if, know? This, if this chat. If this fails and if this stock goes right back down to 10 and then flushes the other way, you have learned a very valuable lesson of take your profits, lock some gains in. So let the man with the suit and the button up and the tie today be slaughtered so he can learn a lesson. We'll see what happens. <laughs> you guys hit the like. We'll see what happens there. Oh, man. Getting hey, greedy. You're now, getting now. greedy. N Nazunade got me watching the clock. I'm I'm looking for that 9:30 bell. I'm like, let's go, let's go. Let's hey go. man. Hey, but one thing I won't let it happen. I'll tell you right now, Zunade, and I think everyone should understand this: is this will not become a loser. I can. What was your en What was your entry price? 9.97 underneath 10. Okay, so if it breaks 10, that's that's huge. Are you gonna? Okay, let me ask this. exactly. I'll if it consolidates that. around 10, are you buying more? No. Because this is one of those that I want to see. It, what was the trade idea to begin with? It was supposed to be a squeeze, right? Like a monster rip. If I'm not seeing that reaction, essentially, my my why I got into the trade is not there. And I so it, it's not to be more of a continuation play. It I was understand. more of a squeeze because we saw what? OPAD. We saw EFTR taking monster rip outs. That's also one to keep on your radar today, OPAD. Had a monster rip, but came all the way back down, and so you know these are the ones that I'm looking at this morning. But if you look, effectors up 16.9 percent. Right. Uh, so we are seeing some of the stocks still holding there. So we'll see if this one keeps running today. That's E F T R. Okay. Um, let me ask you this, right? Why not? And I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Why not book some profits at the 1050? Because it's not that many shares. I'll be okay. Honest. So it's more so of hey. It, it doesn't get me excited to book those profits. Exactly. It, it, it's it's one of those trades where, you know, a lot of times when I do these live trades, we, we have to, I'm watching some charts for you guys, watching multiple trades. So I don't want to put sizing in there that's going to really, let's say, give me the world of pain in the in the middle of my trade, not watching it, right? So, so a lot of these trades I'm taking off of specific levels, of course, like always, but also understanding that, hey, let, let's look more for the, the base hits. These are to yeah. me little small base hits. They just keep my account moving in the right direction. Yeah. And I just saw your, I just saw your private chat. J just, just let me know out loud. Cause I'm not even, I don't even see that. I see the comments on StreamYard. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. That, that's all but good. if you want me to, I can now just let me know. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. I'll let you hold it down once we get yeah. to the open here. I, cool. I, I might have to take my profits, you know, Zunaid already. Gave ah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have AFRM up and I will also hang Mitch out. went YOLO, they say. <laughs> What's up? Uh, Mitch went YOLO. He did. I he did. YOLO. He went YOLO with the stop loss. I'm not selling. <laughs> yeah, so 108, 104 for AFRM. Look for that. I, I agree with, e with Hex here. He's saying baby YOLO. <laughs> yeah, baby YOLO. Baby Oh, there you go. It's it's um it's a junior YOLO, you know. We're just getting the taste of it. Junior varsity. The, the I don't know. Price Fisher, phone. the Fisher Price, <laughs> the Fisher Price trade here. I don't know where my phone is. I but for the folks asking where Ryan is, I believe he's off today. Where in the world is Ryan Fulona? Yeah, I believe he's off today. Yeah, he's enjoying it. He's trying to. He he always does this, and, and I I kind of appreciate this. My man's a big NFL fan. He's enjoying the opening weekend, and he deserves a day. So it's Friday. Like, what is he doing today? For enjoying Ryan, if you're day. watching, what are you doing today? We know what he's doing. He's watching us. <laughs> he's watching us trade right now, guys. All right. Oh, we get towards the bell, I want to go ahead and mention, if you guys want to work on your trading, definitely, guys, right down there in the chat. I'll throw it up there. You guys can come and check out the boot camp. Start learning a little bit, right? One of the things that's hard to do is that Monday through Friday, we're trading, right? We're looking at the market. We're looking at charts. But on the weekend, 
that's the time where we can really start hitting the books, start learning technicals, start learning different approaches. So you guys go check out the boot camp this Saturday. Also, one person is going to win a thousand dollars worth of Dogecoin if you register. So, I mean, that that alone could probably get me there. I wouldn't be mad. I remember when I brought up Doge when it was like I like three pennies. So. I wish it was at that level, but hey, we'll talk a little bit about that. You guys go to the boot camp. It's going to be really fun, guys. We got uh, a lot of traders that you guys can see. Guys like Tim Quast, uh, Amory Van. We got uh, Mark that runs our Benzinga Trading School. It's definitely going to be fun. Starts at 9 a.m. It's absolutely free, guys. Register for free and definitely go to it. Benzinga.com slash events slash boot camps we'll get you there check it out guys there you go and i'm also by the way for the folks in the chat i've got um you can see here i've got an alert set at what is that ding 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 twenty dollars and 44 cents and looks like the market is open all right let's take a look at blade here right out the gates what you doing pal oh i'm looking at it it just went up towards 1058 and then drop towards 1040s let's take a look on the one minute i'll put my chart up while Zunaid definitely looks at some of his let's 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 let it hold 1035 all right so right now that's the support in pre-market we want to see it hold 1035 on any downside action if it goes through 1035 we'll start thinking about taking some profit and just taking it off the table reason why is another reason is when we broke out this is the the wick right there and so after we got above that we started holding we keep chopping right here we want to see continuation through that 1060 not a reversal through the 1035 so let's see what mrna is doing here because i do see and i'm going to focus on the one minute even though the plan will be a little bit longer um, the reason i say that is because i do see um mrna did have some sweeps coming into the 455s about three, four hundred thousand dollars worth. Uh, so I want to see what it does here. If it takes out, hmm. Let me let me sit on this one. I'm not quite sure, but I do want to provide the information to the viewers that I do see that a bunch of options were purchased at the open. You've got a high. Maybe if it breaks, if it breaks four sixty five and it kind of consolidates, and then I'll go ahead and get in with the stop loss below it. And then the profit target would be this 471 area. Um, but let's see. Let's see what happens with MRNA. You've got FSLR sweeps coming in a little bit. Let's see what FSLR is doing. New trade for me at the open. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and set an alert for FSLR right around, let's say, 131. And we'll see what happens with that one. Oh, my man, Mitch Lowe's like, why is nobody talking to me? But chat, let me know what movement you guys see. But so far, this is what I'm doing. And it's all based on options that I see coming in. Um, so, yep, FSLR, Joe. I don't know if you mentioned that after I mentioned it. But yeah, that's definitely one where I see it. I'm actually going to have a buy order out. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and buy FSLR at $100.30 or so. And then my stop loss will be below this $99.50. Maybe even lower than that. We'll see. But that's where I've got it right now. MRNA looks like it's... Testing low of day at the moment. Nothing too crazy. Oh, baby. Look at this one. Chat, let me know what level I gave you guys for AFRM. What was that level? It was 106.60. And it hit the low of 106.70. And it bounced up. And that's a two dollar move now it's not that i'm psychic that i knew what these levels would be it's just this is uh the action that i had before right here 107 area right there you see it right it had trouble getting past it and then it became support and then it kept on going
So you can see right now it's consolidating in that 108 area. Let me see what the options look like because maybe I'll grab something here for AFRM. Don't go yet. Don't go yet, AFRM. Don't do it. The options are a little expensive. Not the best way. All right. I'm going to go ahead and grab a very small size here on AFRM. My stop loss will be at about 107.49 will be my stop loss here. It is it is a bit of a tight stop loss, but it's that's okay with me. Um, <laughs> but I am in AFRM. What's up, pal? You got to <laughs> let me know when you leave. I'm over here like, damn, Mitch ain't even talking to me. <laughs> I'm over here looking at my chart like, yep, that's going to the $10. <laughs> Wait, really? What was the ticker name? Uh, Blade, B-L-D-E. BLD. BLD. -E. Oh, BLD. -E. Yeah, Blade Air Mobility. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> would you look at that chat? So you know what we're going to do now, guys? We're going to go ahead and just set the stop at 10. Normally, mm -hmm. I don't like that, that stop. Mm -hmm. When you go ahead and you set a stop and you just tell yourself, eh, you're playing with fire here. Yeah. Playing with fire. Let's see what happens, guys. All right. As for me, it is kind of playing around a little bit with my stop loss here. I may get stopped out. Okay. Hey, there's only one way. And I'm out. Wayne. All right, guys. Let's now go. it's going to test the low of day here. And let's see what happens near low of day. In terms of mRNA, it is looking to still play with that. Ooh, let's see what ACRS is. Hey, I'll see what happens, Kevin. Kevin talking about look for the bounce at 10.06. It could happen there. I see the, the next level of support there. I've drawn it out also. So good, good job, Kevin, while calling that out. All right, let's go ahead and I'm going to take a look here at the chat, see what they're taking a look at. I see Tiger being called, Play, CrowdStrike, uh, Dollar. Looks like, let me scroll down here. <laughs> Mitch was greedy. They're, they're already calling it. <laughs> Mitch, you were greedy. I, I mean, we said it before. Why, we even... it's, it's just not, it's not enough for me, guys. It's not enough. It's messed up. It's messed up. I don't know who trades for 5%, but then what's your risk side? When did you get into the trade? I mean, I got in it, and then I risked more than 5%, so it wouldn't really make sense. Mm, right? I see. I That's see. your one-to-one, -one, right? So, Ooh, but, Facebook million-dollar sweep into uh, – that's kind of deep in the money, though, so uh, screw that. All right, going to go ahead and go through some of the charts that are being called out here. Uh, let, let me see what SOS did. I know that I was calling that out earlier, so I want to take a look here. Uh, looks like we're, we fought to get right back above three, but then quickly rejected that. We'll see if 290s hold on SOS and it gets back up through the high. You got three attempts to run there through the $3. Let's see if you can get back above there and hold $3. That's what I'd want to see. If not, you could break 290s here. All right, let's go. And what other stock we're seeing? Let me let me fix my screener here. Get to the regular. All right, so it looks like uh, a firm up about sixteen percent, but right out the gate going down there. You see that one get crushed. I don't know if you saw that Zunaid. One eleven's down towards one hundred six, almost to. Didn't you call out one hundred six as the level? Dude, that's what I that's what I was bragging about. I said one hundred six sixty, and I think it bounced at one hundred seven. Um, 70 or excuse me, it bounced. I said 106.60, and I think it bounced at 106.70 or something like that. I on got the initial one. I have a wick right now at 936 towards 105.60. So that's not I'm cool. taking a look at square here. Um, cool. as a YOLO, okay, this is a YOLO. I'll go ahead and just grab one or two. Um, I'm gonna grab the 255s. 255s, you throw it up on square. The I have for Moderna. I got you here. Perfect. Yeah, I just I just purchased it. Uh, my fill was ninety two cents. Um, 
So this is square. It's just because they had flow coming in yesterday. I like the VWAP bounce. Again, this is a complete YOLO. May not get me anywhere in life. It's perfectly fine, which is exactly why it's a YOLO. In terms of AFRM, you can see that it's testing uh, VWAP right now. That's not what I want. It's going to come back and try to test it here. But for me, I'm not getting in unless it hits this area or unless it consolidates over 108. And then I'll look for a push towards 115 so if it can get near this vwap get some consolidation hold i will go ahead and enter once again um i already went ahead and had my 75 cent stop loss so i'm already down on that trade and i have no problem getting back in i just need to see a little bit better at price action there all right i'm going to go ahead and bring up a stock that was mentioned in the chat pays P-A-Y-S, that's pay signs. It's a cheap dollar, it's a $3 stock, but definitely making a nice push on up. What I like is that VWAP bounce. You can clearly see it going up towards 345, right back to VWAP, and what does it do? Immediate recovery, right back up there through the highs. That's a nice VWAP bounce play. OPAD also, I talked about this one in the morning. It is already moving. It's went from 1040 to a high of 1174 in just about eight minutes so big move there right right on up and then right back down so that's how those trades are right now yeah if you're going to try to get into square as a trade 252.50 uh, is your support if it breaks that get out or if you're going to take less size and you want a wider stop loss um red to green would be your stop loss why because if you go ahead and take a look at it right here i really got to figure out how to have previous clothes on my dog on um trading view that was the previous close and as you can see bounced up right on out of that so something to kind of pay attention to there as square is now going a bit um so those yolos that i purchased at 92 cents are now about a buck 25 nothing to write home about but if you have a small account and you went ahead and took that trade please go ahead and exit because i do not want to get any hate tweets if it goes in the red, as Mitch has once again left me, and I had no idea. Mitch, you're killing me. You're killing me. Killing me, me Smalls. You're killing me. You can call me Smalls for the rest of the day. There you go. There you go. <laughs> AFRM. But yeah, anyway, that's what I'm looking at in terms of Square. If you wanted to, again, we had called it out about here. We said, hey, your stop loss could be below VWAP. If you wanted to take less share size and have a wider stop loss, it could be this right over here. Um, so there's that for that one. All right. Let's see what else is going uh, around. Happy saying that Lucid's getting some loving today. Let's go ahead and take a look here. LCID, the Lucid Dreamers. What's going on? I mean, it's above 2040s. We'll see if it holds. Uh, this this one is making it a little push there. I mean, it's not it's not a big massive move, but I mean. This one gets love almost every day. Um, so we'll see what happens. Really, this one recovered. I think if it closes above 20 today, you'll definitely have some bullish uh, mindsets out there. But it, it could also run into heavy resistance at 22, where it really broke down from. We'll see what happens with Lucid. And, of course, the Lucid Motors dreams there are definitely moving on up. SPRT, by the way, looks like it's uh, trying to get over that $25 level. I am taking a look at SE here. Um, there's a little bit of flow, nothing too crazy, but it was at 325s for next week. Um, so I'm keeping an eye on it to see what it does as it pops over 328. Uh, Square, though, is going, and it is now trying to hit that 255 level of course you can see the high is 255.29 but that's what i'm paying attention to again those yolos if you purchase them they're at a buck 25 get out now if you want because i don't want any hate mail later on and se getting through that area of yep there it is right over there did you leave me again I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay. Just looking I've at got you. like three screens, so maybe I'll, I need a fourth one to put StreamYard on. You might. You might. But uh, what I'll, I'll call out here, AMC over 50. I mean, if you remember, I, I remember when I 
I wanted to swing trade this one at 31. I'm still a little upset. Ooh, mRNA. Right. Sorry, you can. No, you, my, you can so it. mRNA is at 450. I'm going to grab a small size right over here. Uh, you can see my alert went off. So I've got a small size here. My stop loss will be two, will be a 448. Again, this is very risky. I may very well lose this in five seconds by the time I finish talking. Um, so just an FYI. In terms of uh, a firm, it has gone ahead and broken that VWAP area. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. Not AFRM. Not, not getting jiggy with it. And if they were AFRM. Frederick a firm, you did have a $1.5 million flow come into November 19th, 110 strike. So that's the reason for that bump there. If you wanted to grab some YOLOs and you could afford burning $200 calls, maybe take a look at 120s for today. If it especially breaks 110 and it consolidates, that's not a bad option. By the way, the MRNA that I got at 450.48, I'm going to go ahead and exit right over here. My exit is 452.32. So let me go ahead and pull up MRNA. Called this one out live. Why did I call it? Because of the levels that we have here at 450. So again, got in at 450.48, got out at 452.32. Is it a big trade? Hell no. But it gives me a nice $2 move, which is exactly what I wanted because my stop loss, if you remember, was 448. So $2 stop loss, $2 profit taking, one to one. I'll go ahead and take that one. Um, I know it's something that's a scalp, so you guys may not have been able to get it, but I hope you at least understand the why behind why I took it. Uh, because even at the top of the show, before the market opened, men went ahead and mentioned that 450 level. So keep an eye on the levels of support resistance in the past. Make sure you look left. And also keep an eye on those psychological levels as well. You ready, you ready Zinaid? Hit me with it. No, 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 getting greedy with it. No, 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 getting greedy with it. I'm guess out. It's all their, you. Guess who, guess who got their stop attacked? Me, right? This guy right here. I put my stop. They just attacked that thing. They you said, had, you you had 50 that. cent profit and you went ahead and you, you can just, give me those shares down there at 9.99. <laughs> you just went ahead and got greedy with it, my look, pal. Look, look oh, at that. Let's see. This is why uh, I maybe don't like payment for order flow, um, but this is the exact reason because you get your stops attacked all the time by market makers right there. Uh, nine ninety nine. You've got no one to blame but you, my friend. Quick bounce. That's that's what I always talk about. But hey, guess what? You've got I mean, no one to blame but you, my friend. You can't be mad. I took my YOLO, break even on the rest. Um, I if you got into. <laughs> If you got into that square and you didn't get out because you were like Mitch and you wanted a little bit more, um, you are now at about break even on those. Actually, I think I'm a down uh, about 10 cents on my square YOLOs, but I do expect it to bounce off of this VWAP area. Um, and if again, if you were in the trade, right, we talked about getting in right over here around 253, went ahead and high as 254. And if you didn't take your profit above 254, I don't know what to tell you. Now you're going to go ahead and test VWAP here. If it holds and we push, that's great. AFRM, too many tickers for me to play today. But it's but these strategies are working. We talked about how, hey, over 108, it didn't consolidate. So I will say that. It did not consolidate. It just went ahead and ripped through there. Um, again, if you wanted to grab the YOLOs and you believe it could maybe sort of reach 120 today, they're about two bucks. So not something I'm personally going to grab just because I have too many tickers to play, but that is something that you can go ahead and do. My main, my, uh, my main position right now is square. That's the one that I'm still in. I went ahead and got out of MRNA. Um, SC had a small position, went ahead and got out of that. Even though SE, I think... Yeah, you could possibly see it go to 332, but I went ahead and exited... Um, <clears throat> near that VWAP test of 330s. If you wanted to get in, you could look at entry at 238, or if it tries to test low of day here, I would definitely go ahead and grab some if you're looking at SE. All right, trying to look for some trades, looking at my scanners, trying to find something moving fast. If you guys got something out there, definitely call it out in the chat. I'm looking now, trying to see what I can see. Um, en 
DP is starting to get into the gap. So that one's an interesting one. Had some news I talked about this morning. I'm going to pull up the chart here for you. It does have a gap that it's starting to get into. Pushed off the VWAP. That's what you want to see there. Back up there towards 282. Um, let's take a look here on the daily so you guys can see that gap that exists. Um, there was a gap down move from the low of 346 to an opening here of 246. So we'll see if it gets through that level, starts filling that gap today. Um, it could make a move towards 340. I say you pay attention towards $3. If it can get through three with some good volume, that can get running. That's ENDP. Man, I kind of want to get into this. Oh, okay, okay. Small share size on AFRM. Okay. Let's go ahead and grab it. Again, small, went ahead and filled A hey, at. Okay, E Traders want to tell me what I filled at. That's always fun. Okay, my cost basis is 110.09. So filled at $110.09. My stop loss will be uh, below the VWAP. So let's just say if it breaks 108, I'm out. My profit target is going to be about 140. Yeah, 113.75. Let's just say that is where I'm looking to take my profits. All right. So that's AFRM. I am in at $100 or 110. Oh, $110.09. My profit target will be about $113.70. Stop loss will be below 108. If you want a tighter stop loss, you can do it right below BWAP. Wouldn't really recommend it because there is a level there. So just an FYI, if we're going to go ahead and take a look at Square, again, testing the VWAP. Let's see what happens if we just pull up the one minute. You can see it tried to break it, bounced off. This is now the second and a half, third attempt, whatever you want to call it. Let's see what happens. All right. I want to... All... Go ahead. Just want to call out, uh, and, and it was called out in the chat also. Um, a lot of, uh, so Ben's called Max N Bounce. It looks like there's Solar is having a good move up. If you look at a couple of Solar names, you'll see them trading well. JKS, Max N, uh, Soul. Um, looking to see maybe is ENPH up. That's another leader there. And phase, yep up also so it looks like an industry move there at least for the day right now we'll see if it continues to move and as you guys know this is my industry to watch i gotta get another play in here i, I made some money up on the last move but I, I need to find another entry in solar we'll see what i find let's see what happened with sprt i see that it failed 25 but let's see why it failed so it broke 25 here all right, chat, I want to I want to kind of focus in on right here if you can share my chart. So look at this, right? 25 level is right about here. This is 25. And it had a nice move. You see that big gigantic candle? Great. But look at the volume right down here. It is below the average volume that's been trading today so far. So the move isn't really convincing because although yeah, it pushed, it was on very light volume. There wasn't there wasn't much support there whatsoever. Um, so you can see that one failed and now it's coming back. So I want to just show an example of just because it breaks your level doesn't mean you necessarily get in. Maybe a small size if you really want, but you've got to also take a look at volume. And you can see there's a lot more red candles with a lot higher volume than there are green candles with green volume there. Um, Square, it is going to go ahead and test Again, this was a YOLO for me, so I don't really care. But if you were in that trade and you were greedy, like Mitch, and you didn't take your profits there, you might be taking your stop losses here. If your stop loss was a bit wider, you're still doing okay. If you wanted to get in right now, you possibly can with the stop loss right over there. If you wanted to wait for the much, much better entry, 250, 50 area right around here is where I would go ahead and consider getting in. It just depends on your risk tolerance. But this, to me, is the better risk reward. It's just a matter of do we get here. So if you wanted, if I were not in this YOLOs and I was not, you know, already had AFRM or whatever, maybe I'd grab about half my size here and then the other half here, and then I would have a stop loss right below it. So that's the way that I would personally play it. AFRM is trying to play with my heart as it hasn't quite gone yet. Just a little consolidation. 
right over here. Again, I'm already in the position at $110.09. So I need for this puppy to break that 110.50 with volume. At the moment, it's trying to play with my money. All right, here's some news this morning. We got some rumors here I want to talk about is WWE. So reportedly preparing for a sale as Disney emerge as a potential buyer. That's the, the rumor that's being put out right now. I'm watching WWE right now. It's trading up about 2.9%. One thing to note also is the dividend X date is in four days. Ooh, look at that. Sometimes these like to run into their dividend date, right? And so uh, that that's not a bad play today. Definitely to take a look at it. Um, I'm going to see what happens. It is trading up on the day. Rumor if Disney buys this. I mean, I don't know what would happen to the World Wrestling Entertainment, but definitely it's hanging out at VWAP. We'll see if it gets a, a run back up. And it's just sideways on the VWAP, which is I, I, I like this because it gives you at least a level to – put your risk on and, and then the upside look is up towards 5237 not a bad trade i'll keep an eye on it wwe i might take a shot on this actually let me start looking this up let me look at the level two and while you do that you can go ahead and see afrm when but it came right on back up now it's trying to enter that zone of consolidation once again let's see what happens um i didn't go ahead and do this i'm a little upset at it because since it was a small position for me here, I could have added more around this zone, especially because this was my stop loss, right? So my risk reward here would have been great. It would have helped me average my cost overall. I did not do it. So let me not pretend like I did, but that was a missed opportunity by me. Um, let's see what else is going on around the market. Uh, SPRT is testing low of day. Um, Well, maybe not testing, but it's headed possibly towards low of day at 24 bucks. Um, 23.62 looks to be the low there. AFRM, baby, I need you to break this 110.50 level, please. Please go ahead and break it. Um, do that square position. Let me go ahead back in square. Let's see what's going on. All right, come on. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna let my chart stay here. GM, you're seeing about 2.5 million dollar sweeps coming into strike 48, expiring on November 19th. GM. So if that's something that you're playing, if that's something you, the type of stock you like, you can go ahead and focus in on that GM at the moment. If you wanted to grab a trade here, you could. Stop loss would be right below the 49.50. You're risking about 25 cents. And you could try to get 25 cents here to this $50 area and then a little bit higher. Again, that was GM that had about $2.5 million come into the November 19th, $48 strike. You're also seeing a little bit of movement on Facebook, 385s. That's interesting. Not saying it'll get there. Not saying it's they're buying it, but that's just the trading that's happening there. You got... Uh multiple fake outs on that SOS that we talked about earlier. So you got a fake out down through the two nineties and they came right back claimed three dollars. Actually you know what's not a fake out? Look at that. Out. Look at that. AFRM <laughs> headed towards where we want it to be. If anyone's in the trade, please don't be greedy, right? Do not be greedy. Don't just try to take it where I'm trying to take my um gains. It's all about the risk reward for you. Please go ahead and take your profits. You know what? Just for the chat, I'm going to go ahead and lock my gains because I, I don't want anyone to be DMing me. So that's a 2% gain that I just got out, and I'll tell you exactly what my fill is. AFRM, $112.21. I am out. As you can see, it is a little higher than where I got out, but I'm out. I don't want to deal with it because I don't want anyone in the chat to try to wait for a bigger move, but I am out. If you went ahead and grabbed those YOLOs that we talked about, the 120s that were around a buck 92 bucks, they're now at 250. Nothing to write home about, but that is about 25% gains. 
but there it is, right? So let's let's see what happened here. And Mitch, please uh, interrupt me if there's anything crazy going on. You're good. We saw it go down. And I, I believe this is where I took a stop loss, right? Let me go ahead and check. Yeah, I went ahead and got in at 108.74. I took a stop loss at uh, about 107.50. So I went ahead and lost about a buck there. But I got back in because it broke my stop loss, went all the way down. I wasn't trying to be a part of the wild ride. I already have, you know, never mind. It's a bad joke. We won't get there. Um, but it went pop deck above, consolidated above the app, went ahead and tested that support of 108 that I have real quick, spiked back up, and then it went crazy. Now, look at this. Look at the volume here. We talked about the volume missing, the lack of from SPRT. Look at the volume here. It's above the average. Therefore, I trust the move here and bang, bang. You got more and more volume that came in after the break. So it's a move that I'm trusting. And this red candle is right at average, if not more. So I would not be surprised if this had a little bit of a bull flag right around here. And it broke once again and tested the $114.50 area. And would you look at that? It said, screw your consolidation. I'm going to go ahead and burst out of your consolidation yellow square anyway. Boy, I went ahead and talked a lot, but hopefully you guys got the point. All right, that E and DP is not looking too bad. We talked about that it could potentially get that run through the $3. It's about to hit that $3 move right now. Uh, there's an also a, a big mover named IC that was moving massively. I think that's a squeeze there, but you're getting a move from $14 above 15 This one could end up halting. Uh, looks like we have news that is trading after a pharmaceutical company reported results of its phase three derby and oak studies in the geographic atrophy. Um, so pretty much phase three data. That's not a bad one to pay attention to biotech, but making moves there um, really holding relatively well at the whole dollar price point. So we'll see how 15 holds here on IC. Nice. Mitch, go ahead, go ahead and throw it back. Go ahead and throw it back. Throw it, throw it back. 114.53. So if you stuck on with a AFRM and you did it, you know, again, it didn't consolidate as well as I'd liked, but that's okay. Went ahead and kind of played with that area that I already have previously. Um, and you see the consolidation, you see the pop. And the, the biggest thing I want you guys to focus on is the volume. Look at these two bars, right? Look at that line and look at how these two bars, the volume bars on the breakout are so much greater. And then if you go ahead and take a look at SPRT, which we previously talked about, and look at this one, right? This breakout past 25, look at the volume. It's eeny, meeny, miny, mo. It's teeny. It doesn't matter. No one cares if you move the stock up by a dollar with a quarter of the volume over there. And so again, AFRM. It's going to go ahead and hit that. If you went ahead and grabbed the 120 YOLOs, you are now up more than 50% on them. So that's doing really, really well. Um, hope you guys went ahead and took a position in that. If you did, congratulations. Tag myself, tag Mitch, tag Benzinga. Post your confirms. Let us know the money that you're making. Uh, I am majorly out of my position, so I can go ahead and take a look at a couple of things. And Tom, yes, that is Benzinga Pro that he's using. And I'll go ahead and show you guys that here in a second um, as well. But yeah, um, if you wanted to get in, like, I'm not familiar with this, but just strictly looking at it, first thing I think of is where's BWAP? It's about 20 cents. So that's my risk. So I'm risking about 20 to 30 cents. My profit target would be about high of day right around here. So 1840. I don't really have a good read on it, but if you ask me for the most basic, common sense um risk reward if you will one to one stop loss would be right below around the 1777 break profit target would be around 1840 so I, excuse me you're looking at about two to one um in terms of risk reward so you went ahead and bought october 115 calls letting half run hey that's awesome if you're gonna let it run that's perfectly fine but please make sure that you know where your stop loss is, right? So it's okay to let it run, but make sure you're not letting it run to zero. And if you let it run to break even, then I guess that's cool. But do keep on um, thinking about that. Looks like quite a few folks got into AFRM. That's awesome. Let's see what it's doing. Coming right back down a little bit. So again, smack that 115 um, level there. And these these are not my levels, right? So let me not take credit for them. Uh, they're... There's Spectre's um, levels who you guys might see 
later on in our live trading shows. But you can see consolidation, pop with volume. I went ahead and exited right here because you guys are watching us trade and I don't want to sit here and you know be responsible for anyone taking a L on a profitable trade. But then again, volume burst, hit that 115 resistance area. Now it's coming down. I would not be surprised if right around here it consolidated a little bit more and then, well, okay, it clearly doesn't even want to wait for me to finish my sentence as it goes. But anyway, I was going to say, I wouldn't be surprised to see it consolidate a little bit more here and then pop right back up to test this. Now, throughout the day, if it does come back and test BWAP, I would go ahead and get back in and my stop loss would it'd be the same thing, right? I'd get back in at 110. My stop loss would be 108 below it. And then I would wait for it to take profits once again. All right. I want to call out a stock that's moving here for us. Rocket Lee, R-K-L-Y here, moving on up there from $10 to 1080 in about three or four minutes there. Uh, hard turnaround there at 10 o'clock, really starting to push there. Now with this, it's, it's having a huge range right now. I mean, 1050 to 1080 there. Um, I, I don't see the level two. I would have to take a look to see if that's actually the range, but it is just bouncing right now all around from 1050 to 1080. We'll see if it gets to the $11 price point. One thing that did happen is 56,000 shares put up, I'm thinking close towards that 1050. Um, that's where you got a little bit of a volume pop. Let's see what happens now. As you can see, very volatile right now. We'll see what happens. Oh, man. I am already exhausted. Uh, I missed my entry for WWE. I was going to take 5130s, but it's already back up there towards 5179. Went up there towards 5220. Um, I'm looking at that bottom right there. You can clearly see it at 26. So I was looking for a 5130 entry, but it's coming back now. Maybe I get a chance to grab it. This is WWE. Of course, the rumor is that they're looking for a buyout and Disney might be the suitor all right let's go ahead let's take a look at what's being talked about in the chat asana being mentioned in the chat i know asana was making big moves on up i was i would look at maybe like other stocks like maybe like monday or something like that to make a move with this one let's take a look here what's happening with monday monday's just going sideways right here so maybe you get a pop through three fifty uh three eighty fives and we can get up there towards 396 today we'll see what happens in that one but Asana is trading up significantly uh, and having a good move today. I'm taking a look around and see if there's anything else. I don't really see anything. You have support that's kind of creeping up above where you're up at the moment. I'm not getting in this unless I see a little bit of consolidation around here. I know that it's up right now, but I want to see consolidation. And then you can make a push towards 25s. But at the moment, I don't really like it. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, if you were kind of bottom fishing, you could have maybe had an entry there, but again, it's not the best uh, for me. Let's go ahead and take a look back at what's going on with Square. I haven't checked on Square a year, and there's a reason for that because Square isn't really doing well. Um, low of day is right here, but that's also the red to green. Uh, so that's a previous close. If you wanted to get in, it's not really the best time, in my opinion. You may want to wait for about one about 250 50 area to go ahead and take a position your stop loss would be below 250 your profit target would be around 252 or so uh, right at that we we have a level all right uh Dinaid, i'm gonna let you hold it down for a second i will be right back no problem no problem at all let's see what else is going on here rkly i do see a block that's coming in to the 12 and a half for RKLY. If you were to get in this one, right, my stop loss would be about 10 bucks. So below below 10 bucks would be my stop loss. I'm getting out with a risk of about 40 cents. I just don't know enough about this. Is this something that like folks are, are I don't want to say pumping, but are they talking about it? Are they mentioning it? Is that what is that what's going on here? Someone's mentioning BBIG. Let's take a look at BBIG. All right. Found its footing. Still not above BWAP, though. Still not above that. Okay. Can I peek at Sava? Let's go ahead and peek at Sava. Okay. 
Sava, let's go ahead and take a look at 10 minute here. So morning flush to about 49. And it's kind of coming right back up here. So yeah, if you wanted to get in, ugh, man, this just moves so wildly that I'm on uncom but I am uncomfortable giving any insight on it. Uh, because these are not the best type of stocks that I trade. For me, the entry would have been around 50 bucks or so, like right around here. Only because then I know where my stop loss is with that whole number of 50 right below it. I'm getting out. Um, right now, if you wanted to get in, I wouldn't get in here. I would maybe wait for it to get around this 5150 area and grab fewer shares and have a stop loss below 50. So your stop loss is kind of wide, right? It's like a buck 50, give or take. However, um, you have less share. So the amount that you'll lose will be the same. But that's that's what I see. I apologize. I don't have a better idea on how, how to play this one. I don't really see any patterns or anything like that. Um, but yeah, you can get in right here with a stop loss below 50, taking less shares. That way you're not damaging your account too much. Let's see what's going on with AFRM. How you doing, pal? Well, 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 would you look at that? Came back in, little bit of consolidation, and now it's trying to go back above, and I wouldn't be surprised if it hits that 114, 115 area once again. Okay, I went ahead and bought 11 AFRM October 15 calls in at $7.83, out at 12, or you got to, for, you're out for a gain of 12.68. That's awesome, man. Congratulations to you, Emperor Bear. That is awesome to see. Winner, uh, winner, chicken dinner. There you go. I love it. Uh, let me see. For me today, ramen though. A8. So Piton is a nice. Piton is on a nice uptrend. If you guys were with us yesterday, um, we mentioned about how Piton had some huge call buying happening. And again, nice little uptrend. Entry for this one, I'm honestly not sure. I think you may have kind of missed it. If it comes right back to the BWAP area, I would go ahead and get in. But for me, this one is a little too long, and the train has left the station, and I don't plan on chasing those, it whatsoever. Those VWAP bounce trades, man. Look at this ENDP. Look how beautiful that that area was. Boom. Right VWAP. VWAP. Wop, 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 wop. Let's see what else we got. I'm just focusing here on AFRM just to see if it, you know, because I want to see um, – so we like we've been we've been we've been right on this more often than not, right? We were wrong in the beginning and I took my stop loss. Mm -hmm. Then we were right about the pop and the consolidation. Saw that with volume. We were right about it coming right back in this area and consolidating and going again. Let's see what it does in this area. While we do that, it looks like someone said Ken G S. So I am horrible at answering questions such as can a stock get to XYZ? Not because like, oh, I'm not a psychic. Not because of that. It's just because I haven't mastered charts in the sense of, hey, can this stock go X, Y, Z? I make money on stocks based on here's where it is right now. Here's where I would get out. And here's where I would take my profit. So I'll attempt to answer your question, but just know that I am not the best at that. Now you're saying, can it get back past 410? Let's see. Let's see. Let's look left. Let's look left. What do you think, Mitch? As you take a look at this chart, do you believe it would get to 410 by next week? I assume you have an option on this one. Um, who who asked for it, by the way? Uh, All right, let's see. I can't find who asked for it, but I believe you have an option, which is why you specifically asked for next Friday. Okay. If you if you asked a question like that, <laughs> yeah, we you know may want you yeah. may want to consider getting out. And I'm being serious; it's not to troll you whatsoever. Um, I'm honestly not sure. What do you see in this one, Mitch? Do you believe it can get to 410, or do you feel like? Well, we're, well, I mean, one of the things that you can clearly see is that it tried to hold 415 like multiple times. They started getting above it, went towards yeah. that 23 times and a turnaround. So what I would look for now is more a weekly chart. Where is the weekly support? Versus wait, 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 wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Earlier today, this was already at four hundred nine forty nine. So, mm -hmm. did you did you not take it? Did you get greedy? Did you pull a Mitch? What happened? 
Because it was it was it was about fifty cents away from your four ten, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if it was it was it Christine I believe that asked for this one. It was um, a big one that it popped up there. Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure why profits weren't taken here because you did have an opportunity in the first five minutes to get out exit unless this is where you took it and then you went ahead and wrote it down where that must have that's that's not a good idea right because if you took it here. If that was your entry, I'm getting out right around here. Right around here, right below VWAP, I'm getting out. Um, because I don't I don't want to deal with the mess that's happening. And well, 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 would you look at where Square bounced again? Low of day, previous close, and now it's looking to test VWAP and break above it possibly. Um mrna let's take a look at mrna so this was our entry this is where we um this right here was our profit or this was our trade that we took live right the 450 we got in here we got out it broke below it but it looks like went ahead and went ahead and tested it it's had a nice little run here someone called it out so i wanted to take a look at it um but yeah, mRNA, nice little recovery there. Uh, Christine said, it's because I have a higher profit. So that's perfectly fine if you had a higher target, right? That's no problem at all. My concern, or I guess my question, because I don't know your strategy, is where was your stop loss, right? Because depending on where your stop loss was, it should hopefully help you feel a little bit more comfortable regarding your trade. That was my that was my whole concern. Uh, how much lower than the price target should you set your? So that's a good question, right? That you, I mean, I can't speak for Mish, but I often struggle with that when it's like, hey, my profit target is one ten, but the stock's around one hundred nine fifty ish. I don't have a perfect answer for you. I am someone who looks at it this way: Am I willing to get, try to gain fifty cents or so? And or excuse me, am I, am I going to try to gain 50 cents or so, but my risk is so much greater, right? So oftentimes you'll hear me when we trade live here, I'll say, oh, hey, I've got a level at 270. I'll probably take my profits around 269, 40 cents, give or take. Um, so for me, I'll always go ahead and take at least half, if not more, a little bit less than that. I don't think there's an exact science to it. I think you just kind of keep an eye on the volume you keep an eye on the markets, you keep an eye on the indices, any options that are coming in, and you go ahead and grab it. Because here's the thing, oops, I don't want to reload whatsoever. If you go ahead and take a look at AFRM, you see how if I would have waited for that 115 and I didn't just snag it right over here around 114.50, I'm now panicking around here. This is where I might have sold them. Like, oh my God, I don't want to break even on this trade. Let me just sell it. And then I eventually go ahead and miss out on that, right? So for me, I would have probably taken this at least half, if not more, then as it came into here, maybe grabbed a little bit more. And then if it came here, cool. If it didn't, if it went down here, that's a different story. So no real signs to it. I usually go ahead and sell right below it. No problem for me whatsoever. You're on mute, but that's okay. We'll see if this will continue. <laughs> We'll see if ECs continues here. This is a shipping low float stock. I want to put it out there. This is a... A warning, you know, this is kind of a, a a big pusher, but I mean, you're talking about a very very small float stock coming up there from about 26.50 to all the way to 29 really quickly. I'll pay attention towards that one. Uh, let's keep going. Um, now, one thing I did want to answer was the question, right? And so, to me, what, one thing I always look at is, let's say I was looking to get out of a stock at I don't know. I, I got in the stock at 27. I'm looking to get out at 29. A lot of the times I'm going to go ahead and put an order out at like 2890 or something like that. I don't have to get the exact profit target. And one thing that you don't want to be doing is like putting profit targets on, let's say like, like the whole dollars, at least from what I see, what you're trying to do is you're, 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 you're pushing like 10 cents or whatever that may be for you. I think you just need to ask yourself, you know, can I take the trade here and call it a complete profitable trade 
Um, a lot of times it's going to be based off percentage for me. So like if I'm looking for a 20% caner and if I get into about like say 19.5, I'll take it. I got no problem. You know, there's nothing wrong. Like you, you're not going to get an exact amount. This is not, trading's not exact. And we can be, we can be honest about that. If it was exact, I mean, I think Zunaid and I would just focus on trying to do that one thing and then just make yeah. a crap load of money. But the truth is, is that you have to be a little subjective with your profit take at that point. So I like to put it out maybe 10 cents below whole dollar. If, I, if my whole dollar was the price target, a lot of the times that's going to be based on the charts. I don't like to set it just on like, let's say a, uh, let's say an objective. I need to get 20%. And if the resistance is at 19, I'm not going to take it. No, of course I'm going to take it. You know what I mean? You have to also relate to the chart because if you don't, then you're, you're not really looking at the chart. You're basing it purely on numbers and then you, you might not get the percentage you're looking for. Uh, what percentage of account are you risking per trade? Okay, so I mean, for me, usually, I mean, I have a little bit of a smaller account for these swing trades and, and trading setups that we're doing here on live trade. So I'm using about 10% of the account. And that's a little bit big for me. But this is also when you have smaller capital, I mean, you got to throw a little bit more into each position. Right. But let, let's say on my bigger account, I don't usually go past 5%. It's usually a 5% position and I try to get multiple trades, not one, right? It's not an all in basket, all out basket. It's let's, let's trade like, you know, I, I sometimes am trading in that account close to 10 names at a time. Um, so it, it is a little bit much to keep up with, but that's the way I like to go about it because I don't want all my eggs in that one basket. I want to be able to have 10 different stocks and in different industries. Um, you know, don't want to always have like, let's say eight gambling stocks and then just thinking that that's going to do me a, a successful trade because at the end of the day, if the gambling sec industry comes down, guess what's going to happen to those eight stocks? Boom. Yeah. I'm going to end up taking eight loses and that's not the idea here also, but I mean, there's no perfect way of trading. I'll definitely say that. And and I guess this is a perfect time to, to throw the disclaimer up, you know? All content is for educational advice, not investment. Um, opinions do not represent those of Benzinga and hosts and guests may maintain positions in the security discussed. But like always, what we're trying to teach you is how we attack it, right? Because that's the only thing we can do is teach you how we like to trade and how our process got us to where we are now. Um, so Zunaid, anything else you want to kind of add to that? Uh, you no, know, I mean, I think you kind of nailed it for me. It's all about, I mean, I'll percent or 2%. And also it's, it's also dependent on the stock, right? So if I'm trading a Tesla, my percentage that I'm risking will be the same, but my share size will be much lower than say, if I was trading SPRT or anything of that nature. Um, but no, my final thoughts here, I guess we've got a few minutes. So I don't need to do final thoughts just yet. Uh, Zunaid, you mentioned that you had to switch platforms from Apple to PC in order to optimize your E-Trade Pro working. What type of hardware do you recommend for screens with multiple charts? So yeah, it's you 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 did you do remember that accurately. I did I do use a PC now. I no longer use a Mac. Um, what type of hardware do I recommend? Mm. Um, I use an i7. So I think when I had an i5. That's the it, first it just it did not work right so mm -hmm. intel i5 it just would not work but when i got an i7 it worked very well i don't know i think for amd it's called like a ryzen 7 or something yeah, like I, that I didn't, you got it so ryzen 7 or higher intel i7 or higher mm -hmm. um is what i would recommend right off the bat matter of fact our main man um aaron thomas Mm -hmm. is going to he's already recorded the video he's doing the editing part and things like that he's going to be releasing a video on three different types i believe three different types of pcs you can buy if you're on a lower budget a little you know higher budget and then if you're okay with spending more money i believe that's what he's already got working on he's just editing it so look out for that from aaron thomas and um i've already been bothering him i'm like dude I might need a new setup. I need you to get this going. I need a, I need a monitor. I want some vertical screen so I can look a little more legit. Yeah. But anyway, to answer your question, i7, Ryzen 7 at least. Yeah, I, I've built my own computer also in my, my trading station that I use at home. Um, it, and I would 100% agree with you, Nate. First things first is that i7. You need that high processor to handle the, the, 
the data and the multiple programs that you're going to have running. And then when you have multiple programs you have running, you're also going to need high in memory. So you, you need, I would say, a minimum of 16 gigabytes. But I have on my computer all the way up to 30 gigabytes because that helps me out. Because when, when I have 30 charts open and then I have 20 uh kind of tabs open on Google Chrome that that takes a lot of memory up and you want to be able to have yeah. something that's going to be able to to give you what you need and not have to worry about okay I got to close all my windows except my trading windows right now because my computer is getting overload yeah um, and I've got a few folks saying hey you know their e-trade works fine on their Macs and it may I got my Mac when I worked for Apple back in like 2011 give or take or something like that um, and it would just overheat. Uh, it would just get very hot and uh, it would just get messy. Um, solar up. Yeah. Ryzen seven. You see, you see someone posting in the chat that's made by AMD. Um, so you can take a look at that. Uh, yeah, check and- out, check out Amazon, Best Buy, whatever. Make sure you do your homework. And if you can wait, wait for Aaron Thomas, we should give Aaron Thomas his email out so people can spam him and tell him we need that video. We need that video. Yeah, I mean, I, I've heard it so many times. I mean, I definitely think it's better to build a PC than to buy one just because in the long run, you get to control what was in it and the setup exactly. Yeah. Uh, like Let's say even graphic cards, right? Like some of us want to use our, our trading computer for gaming also. So, I mean, I had I, I had got a, a nice uh, graphic card for my computer because, I mean, I also want to use it for different things. And um, so also definitely multiple monitors i think well i have four right here at, at benzinga but at home i also have four um uh, zunaid how many you got you got three i've got three so on my left is benzinga pro right down here is my trading to my right is trading view um i do want to have a couple more because i do want to add like cnbc in case there's something talking being talked about um so yeah i have three i do want to go ahead and look at possibly getting four because you know what they say the more monitors you have the more money you make that's actually not true don't don't believe that but you get the point yeah i agree i i definitely think memory is one of the most important they mentioned in the chat that that someone's saying that they use up about 12 gigabytes and that eight wouldn't be enough and i agree eight is not enough um, especially if you're going to have multiple programs open you need a minimum of i think 16 16 yeah yeah it's, it's at no, least for sure yeah, at least have like what you want, right? Is is a well working computer. At that point, if you just don't want to overload your computer, that's why I stepped up to the 32. And one yeah. thing that you can do there when you build your own computer, right? You don't need to go for 32 right off the back. You can do 16 and then do like what I did a year or two later, I bought another 16. You know, that as long as you have the slots for it, then you're gonna be okay. Um, same thing also, like let's say uh hard drives there's 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 like the m1 hard drives now that you can just insert are a lot faster um computers aren't that much anymore i think you can build a good one for about 1300 dollars. nice there you go that that's that's what i would say like you'll have like a a machine that you won't even have to worry about your trading you should be fine at that level yeah um all right let's go ahead uh um, let's talk a little bit about our trading. We're going to get towards 1030 here. We'll be, AB will be jumping in. So Zunaid, how, how'd the day go? What did you like? What did you didn't like? And what to look forward to for the weekend? There's a few things I want to recap in terms of bullet points. It's okay to be wrong in a trade. It's not okay to stay wrong, right? So an example is an AFRM. I went ahead and took like a dollar stop loss. But when I went back above the levels that I wanted and it did what I wanted it to do and it behaved the way that I wanted, I went ahead and got back in, right? And then I had a nice two, three dollar move. And then eventually you had, what was it? A five to seven dollar move. So it's okay to be wrong. Get out, save your money because AFRM, I went ahead and got out and it came back up. Yes. But if you were in square and you didn't get out, you were looking at a much uglier move. So go ahead and respect your stop loss. It's okay to take it and it's perfectly fine. Preserve your capital and come back to play again. If you guys want, throughout the weekend or wherever, go ahead and watch this video back, right? Save it and kind of keep an eye on, hey, why did we get into AFRM? Where was our stop loss? Where was our profit target? And why was it there? And kind of see it back and see what that journey was like. Because everything that we did with AFRM today is pretty much what I do 
with all of my other trades when I'm not trading live with you guys. So watch it back and learn more, I guess, the process and the journey than worry about what the results were. Um, and I went ahead and extended this highlight because, again, this is kind of like the consolidation area now. And as you can see, consolidated, popped, level reached, came back, consolidation a little bit here. And now who knows what will happen. The volume, as you can see, is not the greatest. I wouldn't be surprised to see this fail, especially if the market doesn't participate. So regardless of if you're watching this back or any other stream, you know there are a bunch of other educational stuff out there. Try to learn the journey and the process and forget about the screenshots you see of 500%, this and that, because I can almost guarantee you those same individuals have had their accounts busted many times. Even a blind squirrel can find a nut or two. Yep, that is true. And I'll tell you that at the end of the day, I mean, there's one thing if you're the type of trader that you're looking for a one-time gain to get out of the market and you're never coming back. Yeah. But the difference if you're trying to be at this game for a long time and you're trying to do this as a consistent income, I would say definitely that's when you start realizing, okay, that's not the game for me. Let me go ahead and focus on making smaller gains, but consistent ones and ones that I can control my risk in. All right, that's going to go ahead and do it for us. As you guys heard earlier today, I got a little bit of greedy. I ended up break even on my trade for Blade. Took it yesterday, but hey, I swung traded into the open today, gave it the chance and stuck to my levels, which is, I think, the important part. Sometimes you got to go ahead and just give yourself a pat on the back for sticking to the plan, because at the end of the day, that's what matters, right? It, as long as we establish the plan, know our out plan. Dennis Dick always says this, whether it be on the risk side or the reward side, if you can know your out plan, I think any trade is, is you know, you can take that trade from that point on it's all about execution how are you going to execute that plan and if you're going to get success really successes and come from wins and losses it comes from the execution and this is the important thing because if you look back at your trading and you're noticing hey i'm having a rough time right now i'm in a rut what i think you need to go back and ask yourself am i really executing my strategy because if you do that then you might find that hey Maybe I'm cutting losses a little late, or maybe uh, I'm not getting in the right setup. Um, my eyes are failing me a little bit. I'm jumping in early. Uh, I'm making mistakes, simple mistakes, but my execution is off. This is when we're not in this trading zone. When we're in our trading zone, we nail it. We, we see that pattern. We get in right there on the VWAP, and like you see Zune sometimes, bang, bang, boom, he's out, and he's like, all right, that's how I do it. That's how I want to do it every time. And so the big thing about that is execution. And the faster your trades need to be done, your time horizon, you're going to need to be better and better at that execution. Yeah. So uh, I wish you guys the best out there. Keep trading. Keep battling in there. And let's go ahead and, and bring in my man AB in the house. What's up? Oh, I like that shirt. No, no Benzinga polo for you, pal. I like that. Benny Frank. Benny Frank, baby. I like it. I need you to mail me more merch. That's what I need. I got you. I got you. I'll get you a, uh, you know, 5% off discount on Benzinga swag. <laughs> you see that? You get 5% for today's, you know? Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad all my hard work and AFRM will pay off. All right. We'll let you to it, AB. Go ahead and maybe share a pro screen. Talk about some trades. I know we're supposed to have biotech um, join us. So I'll, I'll check on Vivi, see where she's at. But if anything, I mean, maybe w take a look. What do you I'll, hang, I'll hang for a bit if you need. I don't have a meeting till 11. Yeah, so if beautiful. you need, I can hang with you. Um, Yeah, let me – hold on. I'm just doing something real quick. Unless I'm going to go ahead and – I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my Robin Hood first, okay. and then I'll talk talk about a couple of trades that I've made, and then sure. I'll, I'll pull up a Benzinga Pro screen too so we can just get different um, you know, tickers out of the chat. But, yeah, yeah, let us know in the chat what you're watching. Uh, I heard you guys talking about Affirm. Zuneid, what was your trade in Affirm? So affirm, that's a great question. Let me go ahead and get back. So my first trade was a loss. I went ahead and got in at 108.74, got out at 107.50. So that was an L that I took. Then I went ahead and got back into affirm at $110.09. And uh, let me, pull, I don't know if you have my charts up, but I'll go ahead and pull it I up. I do, yeah. Okay. And then, so this is where we've initially got in. And then on this area right here, went ahead and took an L, right? And then we went ahead and got right back in because it popped above, then it consolidated. And that's what I liked. So I went ahead and grabbed it here, 
saw the volume, it went ahead and popped, and I took my profits around one hundred and twelve dollars and twenty one cents area. And the reason, and I told the chat beforehand, I was like, look, the actual profit target is about one fourteen. The reason I went ahead and took it early is because. I want to make sure that I'm getting in with the chat when I tell them I'm getting in and I want to make sure I'm getting out with the chat when I'm telling them I'm getting out. Right. And of course, when you have other people following you, it's a little different. So I wanted to make sure I took profits since the chat was trading with us. Uh, but that was my trade on a firm. As you can see, it came back, consolidated a little bit and went right back on out. And then we talked about it. If the folks in the chat remember, we said, Hey, if it's going to come back in the VWAP area, look to get back in, which it clearly did right over here. You could have gotten the entry in at about 111 and you've just got a dollar move there. But for me, that was the trade that I was in. I am out of the trade completely. Uh, but that was a thought process behind AFRM. Yeah, I, I think that's really smart, Zuned. Um, I, I like a firm. I think it's might be a little, I'm not getting into it right now because I want to wait and see if it kind of holds these levels or if it comes down at all after these like huge gains that the stock has had over the past week or so. Um, but yeah, anything else on your watch list today? Square is something that I went ahead and played and I've got, um, as it tries to load up here, this was a loss that I took today. Um, well, it's a YOLO, so I haven't taken it, but I am probably going to take a loss on this one. Uh, but something else to kind of educate the folks, if you're just tuning in is the previous close is always something that I will watch, right? Um, the previous close is right over here. The red line, you can see square touched it balanced came back bounce but you can see as a tennis ball the bounces are a little less and less and less right basically you have lower lows is what's happening here um and it just continues to go so for me i'm not gonna go ahead and get into the trade um it just looks not that pretty to me whatsoever but this was one where i took an l but i wanted to educate the folks on looking at the previous close because it can be a level of support and it can be a level of resistance. MRNA, if you need me to talk more, um, MRNA 450 bounce, we went ahead and took that just because that's psychological level. So we went ahead and got an entry at 450 and uh, I think it was maybe 50 cents and went ahead and got out around uh, 450, 250. So $2 move right over there. And those were pretty much our three trades for the day. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I'll go ahead and pull my... Um... Robin Hood up. So I basically have only made one trade today. I did. I mentioned on the stream yesterday, got or maybe two days ago, got marked as a patent day trader on Robin Hood. So now I'm kind of restricted. I don't think I can get in and out of the same positions in the same day yeah. for maybe 90 days or so. Very good. Um, good job. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. But yesterday, <laughs> um, I bought some calls on Facebook kind of into the close. So here, let me pull up Facebook real quick, go to the chart um scroll down here to history so let's see yesterday um you know 21 hours ago so i guess it was yeah around like 2 30 eastern i bought three contracts uh you know short-term calls so i i was worried about if i went further out getting hit with theta so i wanted to go only a week or two out so i went for next friday's expirations three contracts at 195 um or a buck 95 and this morning, Facebook opened up about a full percent. So I was able to sell those. I kind of did them. I didn't sell all three at once, Zunaid. I sold one like right at the open uh, for 289, one for 307, and then one as Facebook was coming down at 248. So I think I took a total profit of about 40% on that trade. Very nice. Um, yeah, and that was a ba basically like the only trade I made today. It was nothing huge, but if we go back to my portfolio. So hold on, go back, go back, right, if you will. Go back and let me see that last trade you took. Can I see that again, please? Yep. Let me see where that last fill was. The last fill was at uh, 248. So these are calls that expired next week. 385 is a strike. And you filled at, the last one was what, I'm sorry? 248? 248, yep. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I was just checking. Okay, so you just filled this one. Yeah, I filled it less than an hour ago. The reason I ask is because Facebook is now at low of day, and I wanted to kind of let the viewers know that, hey, if you were stubborn, <clears throat> and if these failed, and they continue to go down, you'd be losing a lot more. But it looks like it is hanging out around that 380 area. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's kind of why, Zuned, with having three contracts, I was able to sell, you know, one and... um you know, I, I didn't sell all three at once. I sold one and I was like, this way I took some profits. If Facebook continues to go up, I can take more profits on the way up. 
Um, but if the reverse happens and it, and it starts to go down, then I can go ahead and bomb out of those contracts still at a profit. Um, but obviously not as much as if I, so, so yeah, I mean, it looks like the first one I sold 289 that I waited a little bit. Facebook was going higher, took some more profits on the way up and then it started coming down and I bombed out. So overall, um, let's see, let's do some quick mental math. So about- I'll do it for you. So you went ahead and grabbed, um, what'd you grab? You grabbed three contracts at a buck 95, right? Yep. So you spent about 390. Yeah. So you spent about 195 per, you got three of them. So 585 is what you spent. And then you went ahead and sold one for 289, 307, yep. and then 248. So you went ahead and made a profit of 259. Yeah. I mean, not terrible. Just a quick little trade. And, and as I, I said, like so, so now I can't really get in and out of positions in the same day, at least not on my Robinhood account. So I'm going to try to like refrain from doing any really short term options, at least yeah. for the next, you know, few weeks. So this is actually one of the first times that I have like no open option contracts. I mean, this one's technically open, but it's dead in the water, like effectively worth nothing. Um, so I, I basically have no open option contracts for the first time in a while. And honestly, it feels kind of good, Zunaid. Very uh, calm. Dude, I am not going to lie to you. And uh, if you can pull up my chart, um, I'm not going to lie to you. I went ahead and maybe about two to three months ago. Um, the reason I wanted you to pull up my chart, by the way, is we talked about that BWAP bounce. And you can see, again, your stop loss would have been right below, right? So let's just say even if you got in around here, your stop loss would have been below 110. So about a buck, buck 50 stop loss. But you went ahead and gained a nice $3 right over there if you wanted to take it. Um, but what were you we talking about? Damn. Um Oh, yeah. Swing trading, things like that. Yeah. So a few months ago, I went ahead and sold everything in my trading account to the point where I'm going cash. The ma the, the industry, the markets can go ahead and crash 20%. I would feel bad for everyone else, but I wouldn't personally lose money. And I agree with you. When I load up and I know that I am all cash and I have a fresh mindset and I don't need to worry about, oh, this is what happened in the past and this and that, it feels so much better because I'm getting in and out and every single day I am all cash and I love it. I think if I ever were to get back into swing trading as much, it would have to be a separate account because when I look at my, you know, positions, I don't want to see stuff from the past. You know what I mean? I kind of want to have a fresh hundred uh, percent mindset, like you said. Uh, and by the way, you've got, don't forget if, uh, Enver, if you're watching or producer AB, you can, we do have a event tomorrow and that is the Benzinga bootcamp. Uh, where we kind of teach you how to trade stocks, right? And it looks like you can also win a thousand dollars worth of Dogecoin. Who yeah. who knows how much that'll be worth? Who knows? But I got a quick little promo for that. After that, we got a very special guest to bring on VV Biotech Queen. We're gonna be talking I some will biotech go ahead and stocks. So let me go ahead and play this promo. Are you heading out, Zuned? Yeah, you've got a guest coming on, so I just want to help you out until she got here. But I'm out. It's been a pleasure, you guys. A B. I look forward to my five percent off discount, and I'll talk to you later, pal. All right, Zanet, enjoy the rest of your Friday. Have a good weekend, man. You too. Like I said, we got a very special guest joining us right now, going to be talking about some biotech stocks. So if she's ready, I'm going to go ahead and bring her on. Hi, Vivi. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. It's good to see you. Good to see you too. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you and happy uh, belated birthday. I think I saw on Twitter you were celebrating a birthday a few days ago. No, I can't believe I'm 50. I feel like I'm 30 still. It's crazy. Oh, I know. I'm sure you can still pass for 30. So you're you're in a good <laughs> good position. Oh, uh, you're so sweet. Yeah, no, it's kind of crazy for sure. Yeah, no, I had a blast. You know, if I if I it, it, the other options on the ground, right? So if I if I might as well leave my 40s with the bank. So like I rent a yacht, I had a sushi guy, I full bar, it was a saxophone guy. It was a lot of fun. Wow, that sounds amazing. I'm jealous. Yeah, I wish I wish is. I was there. 
It was a lot of fun. You would have had a lot of fun. I would have had a lot of more women than guides too. You would have had fun for sure. <laughs> a lot of cougars there. <laughs> now you're making me even more jealous. Um, all right. I'll probably have a lot of cougars there. That's for sure. <laughs> funny. So okay. So let's see. Let's what's going on. And I, I think in a bio world, um, there's a lot of drama going on with the FDA. Right? How the FDA is just hammering each stock you know uh, day by day there's uh you know the only one that i saw was kmnd got bought out by sanofi but uh there's there's a lot of controversy going on and uh i i have to say the last i don't know three or four months i have changed my strategies i no longer want to hold anything on pedufa at all uh i'm done uh, holding it. you know before i be like oh i'll hold 20 percent through i don't even want to hold 20 percent through i feel like if you know when the you know if you have those those talks on your alert and that uh, you know around because a lot of times also approval comes back comes earlier right uh or gets delayed but if you have those stocks in your alert list i think you can trade uh the day of and still make a profit right so i i'm I always think that it'll be smart to leave some cash on the side so you can trade the day of but uh, for me personally, after I saw what happened to um, ARDX, you know, it was almost pretty much a slam dunk uh, for me. Um, Ninety-five percent institutional ownership, and it didn't get approved. And the funny thing, there's a lot of conspiracy, you know, because um, Sanofi has some interest against ARDX drugs being approved. And Sanofi, ex FDA guy, now works for Sanofi. I'll be honest with you. I feel sometimes that the FDA is it's corrupt. Sorry, but you know I don't trust the FDA anymore. After seeing what happened to ARDX, I'm completely shocked. But I wanted to point it out another one. So uh, I, I I told my show that another a really really um, I I think when you hold a stock for phase one uh, um, readout phase two you should be okay. Phase three, um, it's 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 a lot riskier, right? Because that's when you're doing all the efficacy and FDA, PDUFA, it's, it's even riskier, right? Um, but I, I want to actually, no, it's not riskier. FDA, once your phase three is done, uh, PDUFA is less risk than actually phase three. Phase three hold is even riskier than PDUFA because that's when you're lo really looking at the efficacy. So if you can point out HGEN, Twitter was going nuts about that company. They have a, um, they have a, a, a company that uh, they had a drug for COVID that it was going to kind of uh, uh, calm the psychodone, uh, cy cytokine storm. Um, it, there's a lot of companies that deal with the same one. And uh, what, what was the ticker H on that one again? H-G-E-N. H-G-E-N. Yes. Oh, yeah. So took 50% cut, pretty much a haircut of 50% if the FDA does not approve. That's been lately what we've seen. Um, there's still hope is on, on this one. I had a really like, I only had like 200 shares because I, I thought it was risky. Um, but uh, uh, the FDA now is requesting more um, more uh, studies. But the good, the good news is there's a studies going on right now. So once those studies end of a people that are surfing from COVID, um, they're going to be able to present the additional data to FDA. So there's still hope, but um, FDA has been completely iffy <clears throat> lately with the PDUFA. So I think it's too risky now to to hold um, anything um, through PDUFA. And when I told you guys, my uh, you know, if you put out BCRX for example, that's my biggest hold. You know, um, if you if you if you did BCRX, okay, obviously, um, on a perfect world, I would have bought twenty thousand shares at a four fifty when I first bought, and then sat on it, and you know, and I, today it's almost fifteen bucks. Uh, but it would have been too risky, right? Because I bought the stock before the FDA approval, so I bought it before approval. I only had a three thousand shares. 
because the risk, you know, of not getting approved. So now that this drug has been approved, um, what happened is when you get to the FDA approval, you you they sell the news until the company can prove itself again for sales. And the reason that I'm very, very bullish here is, uh, you know, not only they proved sales, but they had a very successful launch. They did a 10 million at first quarter and then they, they did 20 million at second quarter. So they're going to report again November 4th. And it looks like it's going to be another successful uh, ER. And um, some people like I, I had this slide, somebody told me and that. Uh, one of the reasons I really like Bio, uh, um, BioCrest, uh, BioCrest is because Sarisa Capital owns a lot of it. And Alex Denner is the type of guy that gets deals done and, and, and biotech companies bought out. And uh, I, although I don't want to be CRX to be bought, bought out because I feel like if we get buy out, buy, bought out, it, we're not going to have a full, we're not going to get the full value of the company because the factor D is worth millions, uh, billions, actually not millions, billions. So I don't want it to get bought out, but somebody point out uh, really, really something interesting. Let me, let me tell you guys a fun fact. So Biocrest, Biocrest Cerise and Cantor, um, Fitzgerald Connections, right? So who is our largest hedge fund shareholder? That's Alex Denner from Cerise Capital. Uh, where is Alex Danner in Cerise's office? Is in a Greenwich, Connecticut. And who recently ran Alex Danner's Cerise uh, offering? That was Cantor Fitzgerald. On August 3rd, who initiated a coverage of a BCRX for $21 uh, price target? That was Cantor Fitz Fitzgerald. On August 19th, who had a private one on one meeting with the Viacrest? Cantor Fitzgerald. And where is one of the Cantor Fitzgerald's U.S. headquarters? Connecticut. Wow. So the connection there is like uh, they're trying to make things happen. So there's a lot of talk that rumors that, you know, they're because they pull out that offer to the offering. So uh, Cantor Fitzgerald was going to do the offering and then they pull out. And unfortunately, we we're on a, on the biggest momentum. It was $17 a share. And then the offer came drop to 15 and then they pull out the offer. So uh, a lot of people speculate pull out the offer because they wanted to say F you for whoever was trying to buy them. So um, I still believe that BCRX in three years will be $100 a share. I'm It's my biggest holder uh, holding in my account. I feel like there's still a lot of potential. Bless you. Thank you. So, um, so that's going to be one. So another one I want to point out that's been doing really well, and I talked to you guys about it. It was like, I don't know, $19 a share was AUPH. Uh, AUPH is a really good candidate for a buyout because it's, it's a one-hit wonder, right? There's only one drug, and look at that. So there's, there's, there's rumors going on that um, they're going to get an offer of a $35 a share. We don't know. But I have been um, holding this stock I, for four years, I know I'm in such a paper hands, but I, I sold a lot of it, but I kept, you know, just a thousand shares from five. So I'm holding for that buyout too is on my RA. Um, and I, uh, there's a lot of rumors. I think Benzinga, they went on Benzinga and said that that was a rumor, but, um, their, the, their drug is, it's, finally ramping the sales. Um, they have an amazing drug for uh, lupus nephritis. And I do believe that um, they're a great buyout candidate. And so um, they're doing well, $19. But look at look at that. Look at the, the trajectory. Like I've been talking about UPH, I don't know, since I joined the show, it was like $8, $9 a share. Um, so it has gone up a lot. And I'm very, very bullish still on this company. So I'm holding long. For sure. Yeah, I, I remember with BioCris, this was one of the first ones that you really talked about a lot when coming on Benzinga. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's fun. It's good to see that one doing so well. Oh yeah, it has it has gone up three folds. Yeah, I was when I was talking about it was like five six dollars a share. You know, so another one that I talked to that you know I talked to that it was a six dollars a share went all the way to twenty one dollars a share is this K KMPH, but. Just to follow my my thesis and how, unfortunately, this is how you got to play biotech. 
you get the approval, you sell at the day of, and then it drops tremendously until they can prove sales. So they're not going to be able to, they're not going to produce uh, sales results until I think uh, December uh, for their Q3. So yeah, we need to know how those, those numbers look like, you know, how uh, are the team performing well, are they, you know, doing a, a you know, a successful launch until then it's going to bleed. So, uh, that's why my biggest suggestion is once the company is approved, you want to unload 80% of it and then buy back because, um, and, and, and I was trying to like, maybe even doing a strategy of, uh, if I know when is the Pedufa literally by puts, because it's like, it, it's like textbook. You got approved and then it drops because they, they need to prove, you know, it, the drugs are proven now, can you sell it, right? And so BCRX has proven that. So that's why they're doing so well. And I think they're going to continue to do well. But KMPH, we don't know yet. We don't know if the sales team is taking, you know, share of market of events yet. We don't know. So it's going to bleed for a while until we know, you know, how the sales are going. And then I wanted to go ahead. You have a question. I was just going to say, is there anything that helps you, you know, like something like BioChrist where you can say, like, obviously we don't know for sure if the company's drug is going to get approved um, by the FDA, but is there, are there any signs of a company to you that you're like, okay, this will have a good shot of getting approved. You know, maybe it's like past management that they have a, a history of success. Okay. Um, so, so he, he's a couple things and I'll, I'll tell you um, the reason, um, the reason I held this, um, it was kind of a, a, a the reason I held this because I, I saw the data, the data looked good, but like I said, data doesn't mean anything because FDA say, oh, we don't know, we don't like how, how the design went and we wanted more data. So, but it was, um, it was a differentiation was, um, there was an injection for HAE. This was a form of a pill. I didn't have a lot of to invest, but I, I, I had a positive feeling that there was, uh, there was no ad meeting. So there was, there's, there's no meeting. So it means there's not a, a, a committee trying to decide if, uh, if they should approve a drug or not. So I took kind of a gamble on BCRX, but I'll tell you this much. The reason I held through KMPH, for example, um, usually I will do if, if it's already a drug already approved. So KMPH is a pro drug of a drug. So what they do is they take a molecule and they kind of separate the isomers of the molecule and make it either more potent with the last, uh, you know, with the last uh, side effect. So in case of KMPH, it was a pro drug of another drug. So I knew that safety wouldn't be the issue and it was an improved of an existing drug, right? But I'll give a perfect example, ARDX, it's, it's, I can still not understand. So is a second indication the first indication is IBS, so safety was not a problem at all. Um, there was three three designs uh, for a thousand uh, patients with three studies. Um, all, there was no ad committee, so there was no committee deciding, you know, let's vote against or uh, in favor of the approval, which points out to be a positive sign when they don't have any ad committee. And they, after they came back and say, now we need more additional data. So I just, uh, right now, nothing is guaranteed. So to be honest with you, uh, that, with the FDA, it's, it's such a loose cannon that I don't know what direction it's going to go to. But if I do have a conviction, I, you bet I'm going to have a dry powder on the side to, to trade the day off for that company, you know? So that's why I think everyone's kind of leery now of a, of a, holding through Pedufa because it's uh, another one too, SCSN. Um, I didn't hold the law. I didn't hold the law because I, because the debacle of ARDX, but it was another one that, you know, it's competing against Ketruda, which is a $15 billion drug. Everything pointed out to the approval and it didn't get approved. So they wanted more additional data. So nothing is guaranteed you know and uh, so it's, it's too risky you can lose our how your all your savings by just playing pedufa so i like i told you it might as well just play by puts a month out uh, out from the approval because it's almost guaranteed for you to make money you know because it's gonna get approved and it's gonna drop 
or it's not going to get approved. You know? <laughs> so I'm always like, I'm going to start playing, you know, I'm going to start playing puts on these companies because it's, um, so we're talking about, okay, now we're talking about COVID. I want to talk to you guys about a company that I just, um, I just added this week and is a long term um is a long term play for me but it's i'm gonna give you guys more dd when i have like in on a compilation of it but it's g r t s and i'll tell you guys why i'm so excited about this company so this is uh let's see galera therapeutics no g r t s because gritstone oh g r t s i thought you said x sorry yeah Gris so, gritstone bio yes so what happened is um, the most um, the most important site is the E484, where neutralization by some sera is reduced by tenfold in several mutations, including one in emergency viral lineages in South Africa and in Brazil. So they have a vaccine that is going to have uh, the ability to be more potent and also have immune responses to all those mutations. So um, pretty much when they look at it here, um, they have an, a license agreement with La Jolla Institution of Immunolo Immunology. Greystone gains access to validate the CDA T cell epitopes and spike in all the viral genes. So they have been identified through the studies of a COVID-19. So this is going to be a very unique type of vaccine. So what do they do is they're using this epitopes um, as an uh, edge TM prediction and vaccine platform technology. So Gridstone is developing a vaccine against COVID that has a potential to maximize those CD80 cells and antibody resp responses and protect against the spike molting strain. So Bill and Melinda Foundation is supporting the preclinical for this company and uh, they gave you the, um, the company a grant. Um, they're going to have um, some data coming out this year and that uh, everyone is talking about because the market cap is still under 500 million that's a huge potential of a pfizer buying this uh company uh pretty much what they're saying is um they call it is a second generation vaccine so they're gonna have uh, uh, they're gonna have uh, the studies uh, results for the booster and then for the actual vaccine so um i uh the company seems to be uh what people People rumors saying $36 buyout. They think that would go for. Um, I uh, I decided to to hold this long term. The DD is amazing. There's a 70% institutional ownership here. Um, but if you guys go to Stock Twits, you're gonna find a lot of DD on this company. And the CEO is actually on YouTube, talks about the um, how the vaccine actually works. So it's something unique versus the other uh, companies. And obviously they have a really good e a immunotherapy uh, pipeline as well. If you guys look at the corporate presentation and, um, and the reason I'm also bullish here is a lot of the people in VCRX board, the really, really bright ones that pull out DDD on VCRX. Um, that's how I caught my attention. They, they were also uh, investors here. You know, and there's a big group of a, of a, of a bright investors there that know the science. Um, so um, I started small, but it's it's something that I wanted to accumulate over time. So but I, as soon as somebody on BCRX board is going to give me like the, the whole like DD compi in one in one thing and, I, and I'll share with you guys. So and that's what I was going to tell you. Another another good way to find these these companies is as stock twit sometimes you want a board so travina uh, trvn that's how i found bcrx everyone on travina board was talking about bcrx when it was three dollars and eighty cents and i'm like okay a lot of people are talking about this company what what's this company all about because think about it there's like 500 tickers right for biotech so how do you find those those gems so a lot of times it's from other investors uh, mentioning, and then you just do your own DD, if that makes sense. Got it. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I think a lot of these COVID kind of booster vaccine plays are interesting. I was looking at Novavax earlier, but a lot of these stocks. I mean, the Novavaxes, the Modernas, the Pfizer's. They're so yeah, expensive exactly. already. Yeah, exactly. Do you know Novavax? I had a, a dollar forty cents, uh, four thousand shares, and they had a, a four years ago. They had a bad, um, a bad data on a flu vaccine, 
and I sold at a loss. Like I sold for like one tan and that was before our ex. So with the uh, reverse split, it would still be $15 a share. Can you imagine if I still had it? That's crazy. Like, yeah. You'd be able, you'd be able to retire off that. I know. I know. It's almost like now, like uh, every time a biotech that I, I, I always want to leave at least 500 shares and I want to invest. I'm like, I'll leave 500 shares, maybe in five years. Same with the fate. I had a 5,000 shares of fate at three. I sold at eight and I was like $80 a share. I'm like, oh my God. So that's why I'm not making the same mistake with the PCRX. That's for sure. Wow. And I'm looking at uh, back to GRTS right now. It looks like it's, let me go on a uh, shorter time frame chart. Let's go to the 15 minutes. See what it's just doing right now. It's really like gone crazy up four yeah. and a half percent today. Yes. Yes. So they, they're going to have a, a readout. Um, I'll tell you guys, the readout is, uh, uh, also is overdue. So it could come any minute. I think that's why people are excited because when Moderna went to $33, uh, $33 a share when they had the results. So I think right now, I don't know if you're following the vaccines. I The vaccines, and that's what, what makes me really, really mad about vaccines. Um, I'm not anti-vax, but I'm talking about somebody that already had infection, right? Um, so the breakthrough rates right now for vaccines are 45 percent. So 45 percent of the patients vaccinated are getting um, still getting COVID, right? Obviously, it is a mild uh, case of a COVID. But we look like people like me that had a COVID before. Um, the reinfection rates less than one percent. So I have a friend that's an ER doctor that um, have not seen a single patient being reinfected. Uh, and having COVID for the second time. So, and now they're like have, having all these mandates when you already, you know, somebody that already had COVID really don't need the vaccine right now. And, um, and, and I think because the breakthrough rates are so high, they're really trying to find a quest, right? A uh, search for that vaccine that has less breakthrough cases because yeah, the, the cases are mild, but you still are getting infected. Matter of fact, majority of my friends that got COVID within a month ago, all had the vaccine. So I feel like there's still an un unmet need for having more efficacious. That's why now they're coming up with the booster, right? So if they can neutralize the virus by 100% and not having that much breakthrough, uh, that's gonna be huge because uh, we haven't found the magic vaccine yet, if that makes sense. Got it, yeah, so that makes sense. Yeah, so I still feel like the vaccine is still a, a huge, uh, there's still a huge chase for, you know, it's like finding the, the pot of gold, finding who come up with the best uh, neutralized, COVID neutralized vaccine for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it is amazing how well, um, you know, in some aspects, the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines seem to be working. As you mentioned, you know, people that still get um, COVID with the vaccine only get a mild case. Um, all right, Vivi, well, we are running out of time. We're getting yes. into SPAC's attack. So thank yeah, you for no, joining you. us. So um, I know you guys, it wasn't my fault that we start late to you guys. So uh, just post on a message what tickers you guys wanted me to search, and I'll give it to you guys next week. Yep, and I'll post your Twitter in the chat. So if people aren't following you already, they can go over there and follow you, and you can tweet out um, tickers to Vivi, and maybe she'll pick them up and, and, and do some charting on them. Yeah. Okay, cool. Have you guys have a um, great weekend. You do the same, Vivi. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, y'all. That was Vivi Biotech Queen. Her Twitter is in the chat. Please go give her a follow if you don't follow her already. Um, without further ado, let's go ahead and head over to Spax Attack with Mitch and Chris. It's going to be a great show today, both in the office again.